Hey guys, Steve here. Today we got a game in the Tier 5 French Destroyer, the Guep. I got Violet on this build here. You can actually go with both uh, commanders. Oboino is going to be a little bit more torpedo focused. And Violet a little bit more on the guns. Uh, but then you can mix in kind of a anti-dispersion build as well. We got a new Dawn capture the base mode game here. I'm going to, haven't covered the French Destroyers for a little while. I'm going to kind of go over their state. Uh of a, the State of the Union, I guess, of the, the French destroyers at this current time. Um, first off, what do they do? Well, they tend to be very fast, uh, and typically the fastest destroyers out there. Typically tend to have a lot of health. Uh, they typically have medium range uh, torpedoes that, as you go up the tiers, go faster and faster, and they usually hit pretty hard. Guns, I'd say the guns usually are on the slightly below average side of the equation. Uh, you can have some problems with firing angles as we're demonstrating here with the GWEP uh, to show a full broadside or a full salvo. You gotta go almost broadside. Uh, they're slower, you know, they hit fine. Uh, starting at the GWEP, the tier five, you do have that reload booster, which can change the guns from below average to above average temporarily. So if you can use that reload booster in a 1v1 destroyer fight, for instance, that can often uh, turn the tide in your favor. So there's a lot of tools that the French destroyers have. In fact, they can be quite potent offensively, no doubt about it. The problem they have, check the consumables, there's no smoke. And that was a difficult thing to deal with when the line was introduced. Now, if you play them carefully, like any other destroyer, you know, you don't necessarily need the smoke at all times. But for me, uh, I tend to be relatively aggressive in my destroyer play and having a couple of uh, escape hatches loaded onto the ship, not a bad thing, okay? So it can, the smoke I view mainly defensively on certain ships, you know, you can always use it offensively as a destroyer, I guess you, you could say, but uh, typically I would try and reserve the smokes for situations where I'm either in serious trouble or, uh, you know, we need to disengage at the very least or get out of there. So... Not having that was a problem, and then along came carriers, and the lack of the smoke and the fact that we have probably the worst AA outside of the Japanese destroyers, out of any of the destroyer lines, uh, it becomes an issue, okay? And especially if you're going against a carrier player, who knows what they're doing. In my view, the most strategically effective use of carriers is by players who uh, use them to seek and destroy uh, the destroyers, and whoo, he gone there on the Gorky, trying to hunt us down. Uh, you know, if they can use their carriers to kind of hover over the destroyers, spot them, hope the team actually shoots them, even chime in with the torpedoes, the bombs, get those destroyers off there, uh, then the carrier effectively, you know, you gain a signals intelligence uh, dominance, right? You can control the spotting on the game, you can use your own destroyers to capture bases, if done properly, the carriers can be strategically uh, quite significant. So going against that in the destroyer who can't shoot the planes down and really can't run from them once they find you, that's an issue. Okay, so in that regards, I don't know how viable the French destroyers are in this day and age. You can still have good games with them, but in terms of viewing it from, okay, I'm trying to preserve or increase a win rate uh, on my account, what I want to grind the piss out of. I'm not going to go pick uh, French destroyers to lead the charge. Now, there's a very similar play style uh, newly introduced with the European destroyers, who also don't have smokes, uh, tend to be very fast, tend to have very fast uh, torpedoes, not as hard-hitting uh, guns, you know, middle of the pack. Similar overall characteristics uh, with the French, probably a little bit less health in general, if I recall off the top of my head. The main difference is, however, these Europeans uh, have anywhere from good anti-aircraft uh, systems to excellent. Okay, now I'm fiddling around with it. I'll probably uh, maybe post a video covering this anti-air build on the Oyster Goitland, but I went all in. I changed the commander build and uh, put all the AA mods on there, which I actually already had on that particular ship. I got the, air, the AA rating up to, it was like 96, 98 some were uh, extremely potent, so I haven't actually tried it out yet, but I was at least creating the build. And that's a huge difference, because compared to the Kleber, 
at the legendary tier, which is uh, two tiers now higher than the Oyster Goiton Linus. Uh, that one, I think, on my build has a 46 uh, rating on the anti-aircraft suites, which is not good in comparison. So uh, we can only imagine what the legendary tier European destroyer is going to be, but it should, if it's comparable to the PC version, uh, just shred the planes, which is outstanding. So, you know, in my view, why pick the French? And I'm sure there's going to be French destroyer players or destroyer players in general that are disagreeing with what I'm saying. And I'm not saying the French destroyers are completely bogus or you can't have success with them. I'm just saying why uh, choose them at this point in time. All right, so that's kind of my thoughts on the line as a whole. You guys let me know in the comments what you think here. We'll jump into the game as it exists. You can see we already nuked the Gorky earlier. We got another kill doing God knows what. And then Red snuck the uh, destroyer Fabuki onto the base. Uh, we came back. We countered it, right? Capture the base mode. We understand we need to defend the base to win. Ergo, once we realize there is a threat to the base... We came back. We also had good support from one cruiser, one battleship. Oh, well, it looks like two battleships finally turned around. But the majority of our team didn't. And that kind of highlights the point that I always try and make in these capture the base mode videos. Uh, just because you think, oh, my teammates are closer to the base or they have a certain class of ship that would counter whatever is on the cap, typically a destroyer. Uh, let's say you're in the battleship. You don't want to fight destroyers. So you're thinking, no, oh, let's, let's just hope a cruiser goes to defend the base. They're not going to do it. Usually. Lower tiers, they might, all right? Because lower tiers, generally the players play a lot better strategically or at least more reliably than the higher tier players. Uh, but a lot of times the higher tier players will just ignore the base. They won't look at the map. They won't even be aware that the base is under attack. So this was actually a pretty good uh, result. But what you also want to keep in mind is, let's say, okay, the Aoba goes back to defend the base. If I'm seeing that on the map, I don't want to sit back and say, okay, he's got it. Cruiser's got this. Because he can always catch a torp, right? Any ship can catch a torp. Doesn't matter how good of a player you are. Vape Taste, thanks for subbing. I think this video was shot a couple weeks ago, or the game was, but hopefully you're still enjoying the channel. Uh, but anyway, the point is, don't just say, okay, it looks like our team's got it. Because you don't want to be losing these games. The most frustrating game uh, to lose in World of Warships Legends is capture the base mode where you have three four five uh ship advantage right you're kicking the crap out of them but they get someone on your base and nobody defends it that will piss you off uh if you care about winning whatsoever it's the worst feeling you can have so once that happens to you enough then you just need to learn okay i need to defend the base almost every time unless the situation very specifically dictates that you do something else that's generally your responsibility okay anyway uh, we did a good job there. We did clear the threat. The rest of Red's kind of hanging around here now. We got three kills here. We got, you know, well, hey, look at that. We got a fourth kill. We got the torpedoes striked on that Koenig. He was plugging up the gut, or up the middle, up the gut. And now we're starting to think, okay, a Kraken time. We got two battleships. How do we do this? Okay, we're going to, of course, go for the Kraken. We can't really lose this game. They were on our base for, I don't know, a minute and a half, uh, which, of course, if... Red manages to sink a bunch of ships and tie us up. From that perspective, they probably do have the tiebreaker built in. So we do need to keep that in mind. And as the destroyer uh, player, it is our responsibility to stay alive in these situations. But I'm deciding that we're going to go for the crack and call it an irresponsible play or whatever. Nevertheless, that's what we're going to go for. So we're going to go steam right at them. And this is kind of what you want to be doing if you are in the market for... Uh, deploying a suicide rush, which most of you guys are, let's be honest. Okay, well, look what, what's going on here. He, he either waited or he just happened to reload as soon as we flashed the side, but that's a good play for him regardless of how it happened because uh, he's much likely to hit us. But when we're rushing this guy, and now I'm saying to myself, if we miss these torps, I'm going to ram him and <laughs> try and cause a secondary flood because I do want to crack in here. Uh, reckless plays, I wouldn't necessarily recommend. Most of what I'm doing at the moment, but nevertheless... If we're trying to approach the battleship, we want to be very uh, straight at him, right? Even even if he's aiming properly, there's good horizontal dispersion on every shot, and he's going to miss more. Uh, so that's a little bit of the tactic. Same thing with the Tennessee here. We do drop spot, and we're just trying to get as close to this guy as possible. Once again, going for a suicide rush slash nuclear strike on him. Hoping, you know, because I can chime with the guns here. I can maybe try and... 
get the coup de gras as my team's piling on with shots or maybe we catch him with a fire and we happen to get the tick of the fire the minute you know he's on the ropes about to die those are viable strategies and you can see that's actually what we do here when we're determining eh, probably not going to get in uh to range either to ram or to uh, point blank range torp and this is actually probably a more reliable you know shot we're getting good damage on the superstructure you got to get lucky. Your team's going to try and get the kills as well, but there we do get the Kraken. So that's a look at the Gwepard for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming for you all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you, and we'll see you all later. All right, peace.